Welcome to the first episode of our Delta Green series, everybody. We have a really great episode for you today where we dive a bit into the conversation surrounding sanity mechanics in games and the problematic nature of those mechanics. Uh, and we even get into some character creation afterwards. But before we get to the episode, here's what is coming up in our call to action after the show. Join us back here for thoughts about the episode and the game. We will also go over the standard asking for reviews as well as supporting our Patreon. We even have a new review to read. Ooh. I'm so excited. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> uh, in a similar vein, we do need your help in order to cover the costs of making the show. So you can head over to our Patre Patreon at patreon.com slash character creation cast. If you want to check that out while listening to the episode, we're about one third of the way to our goal for each month. So every little bit helps. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, we also have an announcement about the show and some differences you might hear relatively soon. Uh, we're not sure exactly when, uh, but wheels are in motion at this moment. Uh, and we also have word about a fun Kickstarter launching tomorrow. In the meantime, thank you so much for listening. Enjoy the show. Welcome to Character Creation Cast, a show where we discuss and create characters, the best part of role-playing games, with guests using their favorite systems. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan, and this episode, my co-host Amelia and I are thrilled to welcome Justin Jess from the Complete Discography and the Babylon Project podcast to discuss Delta Green, a game of government conspiracy and unnatural horrors. Welcome to Character Creation Cast. I'm excited that you finally get to be here. You yeah. are one of the people that I probably game with most, and somehow we have not had you on yet. Yeah, I, <laughs> I feel like I might be the most emergency backup host you could possibly have. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> but you frankly have better guests on all the time. Eh, I don't know. <laughs> Depends on the day. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, this is great. I am I'm legitimately excited to be here. I think I've been listen I think I've been on board since series three. So nice. Very nice. Very nice. And I know that you've wanted to come and cover this game for a long time too. This is one that I've like really wanted to play with you for forever, and we need to talk about that at some point. Yeah. <laughs> um but either way, here here now. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about yourself and where people can find you, what kind of projects you're working on? Yes, um, my name is Justin Jess. I am a writer and I guess like pop culture critic. I don't actually do anything with tabletop RPGs beyond run them and play them with other people. I don't make content for them because that's uh, too much of a headache. Uh, <laughs> but I co-host the Complete Discography, which is a Discworld read-through podcast. Um, and the Babylon Project, a show which is about science fiction television. Mm -hmm. uh, we originally covered Babylon 5 and now we are covering uh, Person of Interest. Ooh. Um, I am also a contributor to the Gate Crashers website, uh, where I write about comics, television, and half-naked men beating the stuffing out of each other. <laughs> we have had a lot of people that are, like, super into wrestling on this show, the, I feel like. What I have, There's, like, so much overlap between RPGs it, and it wrestling. Really, it really is. Like, I, Taylor LaBresh is like one of the main people who got me into this. Like, mm -hmm. it, it's there's a lot of stuff. If you like, if you like meta narrative and you yeah. like the idea of sort of, if you like the idea of like storytelling through physicality mm. and character work, like wrestling and role playing games have a huge overlap. Um, I mean, I mean honestly, rest, professional wrestling is just a live action role play game. I know. I yeah. was going to say, I feel like it is just like a very 
complicated but like culturally accepted LARP. Yeah, it's, right? it, is. it is. Like it's it, like LARP for non-nerds. Yeah. But also you, a lot of nerds are super into it. Yeah, I mean you sort of are a nerd when you're into wrestling. You just like people like sort of like, oh I'm not really, but mm, yeah. Really, I, mean, I hate when people do that. I'm like because they're always like super embarrassed about it. It's like, well, you know, like I'm into I'm like be you. Love the things you love. Yeah. It's <laughs> unapologetically. LARP. It is a LARP where the audience is also playing a character. Mm-hmm. Um, and we do not, ha- I do not think we have enough time for me to like talk about any <laughs> of, the, of, of like the, the troops of wrestling as a, as a fictional storytelling art form, because we are here to talk about um, my problematic fave. <laughs> yes. Oh, uh, we um, all have one of those. Heavily lead on problematic and save. Mm-hmm. Totally fair. I do want to say something real quick before we dive into it mm-hmm. um just as a warning for people that this game has a sanity mechanic we are going to talk about it none of us are licensed mental health professionals however i'm like real crazy and i'm very comfortable saying that in the last month i have gone through shock therapy and been hospitalized in a psych ward so i feel like i'm at least slightly qualified to talk about this and I generally personally am fairly comfortable with sanity mechanics in games, but I know a lot of people aren't. So know that's coming up. If that's something that makes you uncomfortable, you don't have to listen. However, we are going to be critical of it. So mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this. Uh, when we'll start by discussing what this game is all about. What's in a game? All right. So what is the core concept of Delta Green? So my elevator pitch whenever I am running Delta Green for people is it's the Mm X-Files. I mean, that's really, that is the cultural, and more recently, I guess, Fringe is the other one that sort of, that cultural touchstone that people can bring on. Mm -hmm. Even though the, um, I, I will have the internet, like, my mentions will be ablaze if I do not mention that Delta Green actually came out a year before the X-Files. Oh. Um, so it is a game of government conspiracy and, and unnatural lore. It is a um, an adaptation of Call of Cthulhu where it sort of asks the question. There's a question that people ask in, like, talking about Call of Cthulhu, why are these people going into this house and trying to stop this thing? Because Mm. no regular person would do that. And Delta Green's answer to this is, you're doing it for a bad government paycheck. Mm -hmm. Um, Oh, bureaucracy. But those benefits. Mm. (laughs) That's where they get you. (laughs) Sweet, sweet benefits. (laughs) Yeah, it's it's a game of cosmic conspiracy horror where... Um, it's taking a lot of ideas of like a secret government agency that's job is to investigate the Cthulhu mythos and burn everything involved related to it. Um, I love it. Yeah, it's <laughs> um, it came out of the 90s and it is it. One of the cool things about it is that it's been updated with its new edition in 2015 to be like a to to update it for the modern day. Um, so it's a it's a fun game that takes stuff from real life and twists it to imagine what it would be like influenced by the mythos. Mm. Very cool. What kind of setting are we talking about? It sounds like if they've updated it, we're playing in a modern setting. But I'm curious, like, is this a setting where it's generally accepted that creepy stuff exists? Or is this like nobody knows about it except these government people that are working with it and we're trying to like warehouse 13 like keep it under yeah wraps. um so yeah the idea of it is that it is incredibly secret and that it is actually like despite the fact that you are that is something you regularly deal with in the game is very rare mm-hmm. um that bet- between like conspiracy theory websites and just the general rarity of it and the fact that Delta Green is there to try to clean up uh, the unnatural. It is very rare. Almost no one knows about it. Even there might even be people within Delta Green who don't know the unnatural exists and just think that they're dealing with like 
weird computer viruses. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. Mm. I love it. Absolutely. So uh, what tools do we need to play this game then? Um, really all you need is I'm like your character sheet, pen and paper, um, and, uh, your standard set of polyhedral dice. Okay. Um, this is a D percentile system. So the things that are going to get the most use are your tens and ones. Hmm. And also friends and pizza. I, I just <laughs> like to make that comment every time. <laughs> uh, what kind of stories and themes are we exploring in this game obviously we talked about a little like the supernatural and and some of that but like what specifically yeah so delta green is is an investigative horror game which mm -hmm. the the idea of it is that there is something weird you are going to go find it and you're going to be exposed to something awful and part of the horror in that is figuring out what it is um uh, delta green can actually do a pretty far-ranging uh set of like what you can do in a story um there one of the things that i love about the setting is that it captivates a lot of people and there's a very healthy fan community for scenarios mm. so mm. there's like there's stuff ranging from doing a delta green operation trying to figure out an unnatural thing on a on like a satellite in orbit so like you're going up into space and doing stuff oh cool and or it could be something as simple as like investigating a cult in Oklahoma that maybe uh, the preacher giving these sermons is using one too many uh, words that are being red flagged in searches mm. um, where it's, you know, it could be just like that. They've maybe just stumbled on a weird book and they're taking ideas from it or they could be a cult, the black goat. Mm. Um but the one of the things that I think like one of the big themes of Delta Green is that in the modern day, government is very large, overreaching and often doesn't know what it's doing or like the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. Mm. Um, so there is always a there are a lot of fictional and real agencies within Delta Green. Which often have, which often when they encounter the unnatural, will form their own agendas. Um, like there is a military tech company called like March Industries that is basically all about like researching and weaponizing the unnatural for profit. Mm. Um, and you get things like that. There's even okay, we're going weird lore stuff here, but I the cool it. thing about Delta Green is you can sort of just decide which lore you like and toss whatever you don't out the window. But there's mm -hmm. even two Delta Greens. There is this, the official sanctioned government Delta Green, which is an actual program that people can put into. And there are the Cowboys or the Outlaws who are, quote unquote, the real Delta Green, who are all the people who are <laughs> like, no, this this government agency isn't real, but we still got to protect people. Oh. <laughs> it also sounds like you can choose then kind of like what scale you want to play at too oh, yeah. like whether this is like a big national thing that's happening or whether this is like small town scooby-doo kind of like oh yeah you something can, weird yeah like i i I've played stuff where it's like two or if i run a scenario where it's like two researchers and um an fbi agent go to an aquarium to investigate whale graffiti um or there's a pre there there's a there's a campaign which is like played at a high level. You are basically like overseeing an entire military operation. Mm. Very cool. It's mm -hmm. you can do cool. a, there's a wide range of stuff you can do there. That's I also really like cool. the idea too that like then if you decide to run a campaign, there's like room to you know that it's not just mm -hmm. like you know scenario mm -hmm. of the week kind of thing. That there's like room to kind of move up and gradually get bigger and. Mm -hmm. And that kind of stuff, too. That's really nice. Yeah. So so is it a lot of uh, sort of like investigatory work or uh, like combat type of uh, work? Like what sort of specific things do characters then do uh, in Delta it Green? Is, I would say that it's a heavily a heavy investigation lean where you're trying to find clues. You're trying to link stuff up. You're trying to figure out what's going on. Um, Delta Green is... Um, I would say is even more infamous than Call of Cthulhu for player lethality. Oh, um, interesting. Yeah, where like Call of Cthulhu is sort of like 
Oh yeah, you'll you'll run into a like a deep one, and it'll be a tough fight, and there's a good chance you could die. Um, Delta Green, like if you ask what player characters do in Delta Green, the answer is they die a lot. Oh um, no! <laughs> um, and the idea is that like not only are when 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 Delta Green was originally created as a spinoff of Call of Cthulhu, like all the monsters got more lethal. Oh wow! But it's also like the rules for modern weapons are very cruel. Um, and it's basically the only game I run where I like say like, hey, where, where I warn someone, we're like, hey, it's it's not likely that your characters are going to die, but there is the chance of a character dying in like any scenario you run. You know, it's higher than what it would normally be for like any other one shot I would run. <laughs> yeah, uh, right, right. It's like enough that I have to mention it. Oh, I can I can imagine if if it's that lethal, like running a one shot at, uh, at a convention and just having like a stack of secret player <laughs> characters that they can slot in as people die. All right, mm -hmm. you're playing this one now. <laughs> Um, yeah, I it's... love that for like a one shot, especially like for a con game too. That like I'm like, let's go all in, and like I know not everybody's like that, but I'm like, yeah, mess I don't, me up. I don't like <laughs> I don't take joy of like you know I'm not one of those GMs who like oh I like killing players no it's not, but finding the ways that like stuff happens and breaks down like this is the only game where I've had friendly fire happen. Oh. Um, <laughs> Like because, like legit friendly fire instead of oh I rolled a one you hit your friend yeah no it's it's <laughs> like somebody's like there's a horrible monster in front of me I'm spraying full automatic into melee and I'm like okay I'm just gonna walk you through what's gonna happen here do, do, do you still want to do that yep <laughs> oh wow it. it's the I I I'm more scared of what I'm more scared of what's down the hall than I care about my friend yeah. Um, which is a which I mean, if I'm running a game, if I'm running a horror game and I reach that point, I consider it a success. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think as long as you're having like open conversations about that at your table mm -hmm. saying like, just be aware. Yeah, this is you know, this is going to be a potential result. And, mm -hmm. you know, telling people ahead of time, like you said, that like you could die, making sure that everybody's on the same page. And I feel like as long as everybody is cool with that, like, go for it. Yeah, mm -hmm. because I very much am like. I don't care if I die. I just want it to be cool when I do. Like, I don't want to die for a stupid reason, you know? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, you want I just, like, want to look cool while I'm doing it. Uh. That's what's important. <laughs> or I want to die tragically. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that's all I care about. <laughs> do it for the story. Right. What do you think is unique about Delta Green? Like, there's plenty of horror games there's even a number of cosmic horror games there's obviously already call of cthulhu um what draws you to this game in particular what i think sets delta green apart from stuff even like even from call of cthulhu is firstly the incredibly realized setting um mm -hmm. where there will be there's a lot of source books for delta green where if nothing else, it'll give you ideas. And um, the way that it really heavily leans into what it's trying to do, um, you know, showing the modern world of like evil corporations, um, corrupt bureaucracies, mm -hmm. and in, in other ways, showing like how social movements could be manipulated by monsters. Um, mm. I think I think that for the most part, it does that really well. And that combination of things where it creates this very it's this close to reality, but just shifted a little bit. Mm. It's very fun. Mm -hmm. um, I don't like, you know, it's there's certain topics that are like even I don't want to play in a game. But there's the fact that I, I'm a big fan of, you know, like investigative stuff, but making this weird like horror spy x-files uh con conglomeration it just creates something that's really unique and for the most part uh it creates something that's different enough from a lot of other role-playing experiences that it's not something that i like always want to run but when october rolls around i'm like hey let's do the delta green one shots for halloween mm -hmm. yeah yeah i mean it sounds like i, I like the fact that um, 
you know, especially you talked about like things being rare, like the supernatural is still a rare thing. Mm -hmm. And so that it's not, um, you know, it's, it's not just like, oh, there's monsters, whatever. Like, I feel like a lot of times when I look at Call of Cthulhu stuff, it's like, okay, every mansion is haunted. Um, (laughs) and like, I like the idea that it's like, you, you don't know what you're getting there is some level of mystery to it because it's not ubiquitous Mm -hmm. and i think one of the things that really helps with the scale is that whenever a monster is presented in the book there are a number of different ways to show how it can be presented because it's Mm -hmm. a mythos it's it's hyper geometric science that Mm -hmm. to us looks like magic but it means that the same monster maybe doesn't look the same to two different people or presents itself in a different way since the first time it was recorded in the 30s. Um, mm. And so there's a lot of times where you will see something and like maybe at, at like when we're doing after session stuff and like scenario is over, it's like she reveals, oh yeah, those were deep ones. And it's like, those weren't deep ones. They don't, they don't like sound like anything I've played before. I was like, mm-hmm. yeah, I changed some stuff, um, which I think is something <laughs> that like the game really encourages and like has textual stuff to support it of like, oh, yeah, maybe if, you know, these deep ones are originally from like the South Atlantic, they're going to show very different traits than like what we typically see in Lovecraft of like the Innsmouth deep ones. Mm-hmm. Which, I really like that because I feel like that keeps your players on their toes, too, that you're not going into it being like, I know what this is. Yeah, it keeps you from what I would call like monster manual syndrome. Right. Where yeah. Where, in, where it's like, OK, I have this Pokedex entry opened up. I know exactly mm-hmm. what I need to do. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, before we get uh, into creating our characters, we've got a couple things to discuss. Uh, so you t- you mentioned it uh, previously for the history of this game. Um, it-, it was originally created as a supplement for Call of Cthulhu. Yeah, so it was originally part of a scenario um, published in 1992 for a fanzine called The Unspeakable Oath. Mm. Um uh, some I, if I get that wrong, somebody will correct me in the in your mentions. Um, look forward to them uh, <laughs> tagging me. Um, but yeah, it was and like it was sort of just a, a setting for Call of Cthulhu's modern rules for a long time. It, like it didn't even have like a real source book that came out until 1997. Mm. Uh, then I think in 2015 they did a Kickstarter for it, and in 2016 it got released as its own separate game. So there okay. are. In the you know, and we'll be get, we're going to be doing like the actual standalone game that was released in 2016, where there is some stuff that's left over from Legacy Call of Cthulhu, but it's I mean overall it's sort of become its own deck. Mm-hmm. You can st- you can see like some skeleton stuff, but I think but it's very different. Yeah, I I was looking at the character sheet before we uh, started, and I'm like. Uh... It it does have a feel of a Call of Cthulhu character sheet, which is really interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you've got you've got the like characteristics, which they in Call of Cthulhu you've got stuff like size, um, education, and stuff. But uh, it's sort of just compressed down into the six D and D statistics, except they change mm-hmm. uh, wisdom for uh, power or. Uh, willpower okay (laughs) before we sit down to like actually make our characters let's go over kind of the basic terms and stuff that people Mm -hmm. need to know to be able to play along at home um i wrote down a few that i kind of just i honestly i don't remember where i got them from i clearly (laughs) didn't even remember making the outline so i wrote down a few (laughs) if you have any other ones you'd like to discuss go for it um so yeah statistics are what we discussed about um with the idea of like you know you've got strength constitution dexterity intelligence power charisma um mm-hmm. you have your score for those which is like a D number between three and 15 but the main thing that you want to do for there or the main thing that they get tested against is you multiply all those scores by five so like if you ever need to make a strength chest test it's going to be like strength times five so if you've got a strength of 10 
it's going to be 50. So you need to roll under a 50. Uh, oh, okay. To be to, like, that's going to be your standard test if you just need to test your strength. Okay. Um, let's see some other things. Uh, there are going to be some derived attributes like your hit points, um, how many willpower points you have, um, sanity, and your breaking point. Um, we'll get into sanity a little bit later for our actual discussion about that. Mm -hmm. um, there are also your skills, which is a long laundry list of things that are require some level of training or um, which require like some level of training or expertise. Um, the cool thing is that like, unlike some D percentile games where everything's like starts at like a zero or something, everything here, like a lot of them represent like the, they have like a base number that represents sort of like the, minimum competency a regular adult would have. Mm. So, I was going like, to say, the non-toddler score. Yeah, so like <laughs> accounting, you get a 10% of the accounting for existing because like, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're, a, you're a professional adult who is likely employed by the United States government. You've spent money before. You maybe know how to look at your bank account balance. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> and like, you can check the vibes on that. Like saying, that, sound, that sounds right. Or, oh, hey, something's weird there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I know how much I get paid in a month, okay? Yeah, mm -hmm. and like, you know, you passed your driver's test. You have at least 20% in drive, at least right now. Mm -hmm. uh, that seems accurate. Yeah, I mean, I, I, would, I would probably put myself at like a 15, but that's, you know, we're, we're not, <laughs> I'm not dragging myself here. Um, I love, like, athletics at 30. I'm like, who are you looking at? Like, it's fine. Um, As I part of a government agency, that makes a little bit more sense. I yeah. fell down the stairs and broke my hand. Yeah. Um, some other things that are of note is that there are, for anything that's not on this list, for not on the skill list, but might require, but might be something super specialized, there is special training skills you can take. Like, for example, uh, if you, like, for whatever reason, want to be playing, like, a parachute rescue person or, like, a parachute drop uh, 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 soldier or something. Mm. You know, you might get a you might get a skill in your profession package, which is going to be like parachute fifty percent or something like that. Oh. Uh, you know, weird stuff like that. Uh, the other big one is bonds. Uh, bonds are people are are people you connect with who represent like sources of stability for your character, um, and. They all have a like starting value, which is, I believe, equal to your charisma score. Mm. Um, and they're they're sort of like your extra armor against horrible things happening to you. Where oh, no. if you might be losing sanity from a test, you could project that trauma onto your bond with another person. Um okay. so you might like you know, if you're close to your breaking point and you're maybe rolling not so green on a test, it's like you project that trauma towards like one of your bonds. And then maybe when you're in a home scene, you might represent how that relationship is deteriorating. Um, okay. Which I think is maybe a good place for us to talk about, like to have our big sanity discussion. Yeah. So like I'm thinking about that and it's like on a basic level to me, that makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. Like when stuff is really bad, I go to people in my life and like, you know, like I called my mom and was like, mom, not doing great. Please drive me to the hospital so I can check myself in, right? Like that's, you know, there are people that you go to for those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. um, I don't love the idea that it makes that relationship worse <laughs> I, because I currently feel like, yes, it yeah. probably does stress my mom, but I also feel like I have been more honest with her and now like we're in a better place because she knows what's up. I agree with you. My counterpoint to this within like the framework of the game is that nobody choosing to do this is going to have healthy relationships. Um, I also think probably there's a difference between like calling my mom and being like, hey, mm. mom, um, I'm super mentally ill. You already knew I was bad, but it's really bad. And then calling my mom and being like, I saw Cthulhu today, yeah. right. you know, or like that's <laughs> yeah. right. Like that's going to freak her out, too. And like, you know, if she didn't know those monsters existed and yeah. now she does, that probably doesn't 
do much for like the, feeling great. The other thing that I think separates Delta Grain from a lot of other horror games where in a lot of other horror games, the only thing that causes you tr trauma or losing sanity is seeing unnatural monsters. Mm -hmm. In Delta Green, doing violence to other people, even when it is justified, is cause for a sanity test. Oh, I really like that. Um, so there are three so there are three typical sources of a sanity test. Those are violence, helplessness, and the unnatural. And like every unnatural creature is going to have a like uh, uh, basically like a test just for seeing it and experiencing it. Um, right. I'm trying to pull up the exact point in the book. Um, it, it, to me, it sounds like mental stress. Yeah, it really is. Like I, I like if I could rename this, I would call it like stability or stress. Um, yeah, but like because like it. it you experience trauma mm -hmm. and you have more stress on your brain because you are, you know, not, not, you have to deal with something tough. Right. Right. Yeah. And, right. I mean, and, and that's a reality, right? Like in our daily lives. Too. Yeah. Like if I did violence to another person, ideally, if I'm not, you know, if I don't have some sort of like personality disorder, um, I feel bad about that and like it makes me rethink my own identity yeah right yeah but it it doesn't it doesn't like tick a like oh well, i'm a little bit less sane now it, 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 that that's i think the part that that feels kind of gross with a lot of the sanity mechanics is mm -hmm. it's it's implying that you're you're losing your mind completely instead of dealing with like stress and anguish yeah i also think that some of the frustration too is the idea that you have m masked at it i can't yeah. think of the word that i want yeah but once um, it becomes a numerical it, score it becomes a it becomes a it, it becomes a game mechanic that's what it is and yeah, right right and i think the idea of like gamifying mental health is what makes people uncomfortable and i I totally get it. Yeah. Like, you know, it's not a fun game. Um, on the other hand, as somebody who's mentally unstable, um, I do like being able to experience it and like take it seriously in a game because mm -hmm. now that you have made it a stat, it's something that we have to deal with. And it's something that you've said, this is a reality. And I do like that. So I, I, like, I understand why people are uncomfortable with it. Mm -hmm. I kind of like it in games because I, I like to be able to sort of play around with that and sort of experience some of those things in a safe environment where mm -hmm. I can be like, mm -hmm. you know, like this thing would mess me up and I want to be able to explore the consequences of that. I don't want to just write it off. Well, it's it's almost like the hit point sort of discussion too, right? Like... In in traditional like Dungeons and Dragons hit points, when it, whenever people play the game, in most cases, they're going to describe a hit and a hit to your hit points as I got stabbed or, you know, I got shot with that arrow right in my shoulder. It's like that's going to mess you up a lot more than you think when mm -hmm. in reality, the game even tells you. Hit points are kind of like your will to combat still, yeah. right? And you really don't get that stab wound until you're like practically at zero. You, you know? can get bruised and you can get scraped up, but like yeah. all of those or, are things too. Or like yeah. close calls or you're getting exhausted parrying this guy or or whatever, you know? And mm -hmm. and like it's it's a lot more nebulous of what these hit points technically mean. But like mm -hmm. when you get to that zero, you're you're down and out. Right. Where yeah. whereas yeah. like these sort of sanity mechanics that we see is like you get a certain amount, but then you get this mental anguish and mental stress too much. And you get to a point where it's like, I'm done. I, I think the thing is, like, once you start to numerically represent it you remove a lot of nuance yeah exactly. and i think that's the thing that 
people get, I mean, it's not the only thing, but I think that is a thing that people get frustrated about because it's like it, in reality, it is way more nuanced than that. There's so much more to poor mental health. There's so much more to recovering from those things, Mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. However, I also recognize that we don't need a 600 page book because we, you know, put like the DSM inside the Delta Green book (laughs) so that we can check if you, you know, meet the criteria for being schizophrenic now. Mm -hmm. Like, that's not what we're looking to do. Yeah. And I will like I will say that, like, also, like what Delta Green is not trying to replicate, at least is not like your day to day. Like, you know, my life, you know, I I have depression, you know, like, I, I, you know, I don't need to gamify what chronic depression looks like. I can role play that just fine. Right. Mm -hmm. Like I'm, I'm LARPing that every day. Like, (laughs) I mean, the, what, what generally that's the sanity mechanics. And I feel like if it was just named something else, it would probably be like, right. Right. Like if we didn't call it that, if you were just Uh like, um, like my the other game that you will probably bring me back for at some point, the gumshoes systems, um, mm-hmm. because uh, but they, they use a stability, which is like not perfect, but it's still a better term. Mm-hmm. Um, right. And I mean, at least what Delta Green is trying to replicate here with the sanity mechanics is like the, you know, it's traumatic events. It's not your day to day life. It, it's, mm-hmm. right. you know, so like. Even like stuff like helplessness is like the the first thing the first thing literally on the helplessness list of like typical stimuli is being fired from your job, mm. um, yeah. which can happen in this game. That is a way your character can develop. Um, but also like if you lose a bond, that is considered mm-hmm. that's considered traumatic and something that you could eventually like like that that is something that you could lose sanity from. Um, mm. for sure and it's like and yeah just because of the way it's i i wonder if it is just because i part of it is just the legacy call of cthulhu yeah. like we're keeping this term because it's recognizable to our audience yeah. right um, right but also tying it with the supernatural and the the lovecraftian mythos of it um, yeah, it really does uh, kind of speak to the genre, right? When when mm-hmm. sanity is such a huge thing built into the the uh, you know the supernatural, the cosmic horror uh, like genre, that's that's goes back, you know, what a hundred plus years of like these stories of people, you know, quote unquote, losing their minds because they. Uh, you know, accidentally stared Cthulhu in the eye. I mean, let's be I real. It's because like... it's because like HP Lovecraft was afraid of Italian people. Mm. We we well, couldn't, we, we are kind of scared. We couldn't like... we couldn't do like we couldn't do a Delta a Delta Green podcast without at least me doing one dunk on HP Lovecraft. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, please it. go for it, all of it. Uh-huh. Yeah, I I don't know. We're always talking with our hands. It's very uncomfortable. Um, I think some of it is the the sort of historical legacy of what sanity means in a game Mm -hmm. like call of cthulhu too is that like when you are low on sanity you are in a straight jacket in a padded room and it sounds like this is a little bit different than that this is sort of like i've had a nervous breakdown i've had you know Mm -hmm. which is a totally different thing (laughs) like yeah yeah there's there. there's even stuff um, of like if you lose more if there's a there's a threshold i think it's five sanity if you lose more than one in your t- like more than one in a single test you basically have i think it's called like temporary insanity it's not great but it is like oh hey depending on the source of this you have different reactions you can take for mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. It could be either be like fight it run away from it or break down and just like submit to it which i think is like it's an interesting way of doing it you know yeah i mean it's Mm -hmm. just basically gamifying the fight or flight instinct that's built into us and like if i was thrown into a situation with all these horrifying monsters i don't know how i would react but i i i'd be willing to bet after a certain point i would just not be able to function as i would want to function because it's like you know, en- enough is enough. When does it stop? Mm-hmm. You know, 
I mean, I think we like we already feel like that in our daily lives when something traumatic happens. Yeah, you know? exactly. Like, I, and it sounds to me like a lot of the issue in this one in particular is that we just really got to work on what words we use for things uh-huh. and words the matter. associations that we have with those things. Yeah. It, it, it sounds like overall, um, you know. It, as much as you can when you are gamifying something complex, yeah. they've it, it they've done okay. Um, it's, it's, it's just better like, than Call- don't call it that. Yeah, it's better than <laughs> Call of Cthulhu, which is like the tiniest gold star I can give. <laughs> right, yeah. Um, but I also think that like, to me at least, it's important that a game like this have something like that because mm-hmm. I do feel like it's important to to talk about the importance of that in horror because i i think you're not truly doing horror or like taking it seriously if you're not thinking about the mental impact not just the physical impact because mm. so much of horror is psychological and so if you aren't including that in any way shape or form mm-hmm. it it really diminishes the experience Right. And and that's like where things like Dread have the Jenga Tower, right? And then Mm -hmm. that's the literal mechanic that makes you feel as a person playing the game that That sort of that tension, Mm -hmm. that dread. Mm -hmm. Um, Whereas in a more traditional role playing game, you you, it, it feels like having a mechanic to feel like things are going in a very bad direction like that. Is you good need to, to have. see that thing like ticking down. Yeah, yeah. to it's, build it's, don't, some of Don't that. call it sanity. Yeah, right. It's the opposite of a. <laughs> Just it's like the, it. it's like the the opposite of a power fantasy. It's yeah. the, right. It's the it's the spiraling like around the drain that you want to feel of getting closer and being in more endangered. Hmm. Hmm. And I also think like the um. You know, like, even though you you talked about, like, losing sanity based on helplessness, but, like, the growing sense of helplessness that you Mm -hmm. already have when you are, like, watching yourself lose your mind. You know, like, as my stuff gets worse, I get, like, more and more anxious about it because it's, like, where do we go now? Like, what's going to happen once it, you know? And I think as you experience trauma, the, like toll that that takes on you and emotionally what that does to you like you you need some of that or it just doesn't have that same like emotional impact and i think a horror game needs to affect you emotionally Mm -hmm. otherwise it's not a horror game it's just an it's just an action movie with people with weird faces Uh right it's just like uh yeah yeah spooky like it's casper the friendly ghost instead of (laughs) you know (laughs) Do we do we want to get into this? I feel like we've yeah we I think we've had like the best conversation about this that like three of us who are not trained professionals could have right yep. right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sorry, dear audience, for inflicting you with my entire mental health history, which I've been pretty open about. But you know, uh, that's why you're we're, that's why that's why I get brought on here to talk about weird, uncomfortable subjects. Right. <laughs> Let's no, talk about the military no, surveillance state. Yay! Yay! Big fan of that. Well, I mean, how many episodes, like anti-capitalist episodes, do we have at this point? Oh, it's way so too many. many. Yeah, so many. No, not too many. No, 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 no. Many, 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 many. Not we enough. Have many, but not too many. Not enough. That's true. <laughs> well, all right. Uh, yeah, let's make we, some people. Let's make some people. Yeah. Let's make some people. All right. all right. Where do we start? Where do we start? All right. So. Um, the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to determine our statistics. Um, those are just to refresh strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, power, and charisma. They range from three, the worst, to 18, the best, with 10 being an average for an ordinary adult. Um, we do not have to worry about the D&D, like every two over 10 thing, nobody, no, no. Just clean it out of your mind. <laughs> um, there Good. are two ways we can do this. One is assigning points, and the other is going to be rolling. Um, I am going to be rolling oh. because, frankly, I just, yeah. 
I love rolling. Yeah. Hold on, uh -huh. let me go get uh -huh. my dice. I'm getting my dice too. Can I use my Akatakon dice that go to seven? Um, no, don't do that. Ah. <laughs> uh, and oh uh, yeah, tell. There we go. Hey, vase friend. Oh, this is my, ooh, look um, at that! Yeah. That hey. looks like a that almost looks like a like a geode uh like interior. Hey. I am going to bring out my weird alien dice because the grays, because like the great, the rascal gray aliens exist in uh, Delta Green. Of course. Um, mm. They are, they're, they're constructs of Amigo. Um, so yeah, we're going to use those. Um, so Bye. yeah, Hi. it's going to be 46 drop the lowest, and then you're going to get to assign those in whatever order you want. Oh, thank goodness. Gosh. I, I'm used to like older games uh, where, you just, where you're doing 46 but it, like, and drop the lowest and it's like, okay, but you're going in order. You get what you get. Get to 10. That's, so it's a 14 and a 10. Um, All right. I just need um, a notepad. If I could find my notepad app. There we go. I got it. I'm using um my... My very cool bone dice. No. Okay. So sorry, I wasn't listening because I was digging in my jar. What am I rolling? Uh, so we roll. You're gonna 46. roll forty-six three times, and you're gonna drop no. the lowest. Five. Well, then I guess I'm just gonna find some d sixes. Well, six rolls, right? Yeah, six rolls. Yes. Did I say five? I see. You said three, but that's okay. Oh, uh, you said uh, oh, okay. Just halfway there. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Uh, Who said you could do this? Thirteen. Okay. You know what? Let's uh, let's see here. I got a fourteen, ten, twelve, nine, eleven, thirteen. Um. Uh, six. <laughs> no wait, the first one was sixteen, not fourteen. Can't math apparently. I'll take it. I'll take it. Uh, 16, 12, 6, 14, 15, 15. Jeez. <laughs> that's, that's pretty good. My yeah. first roll is 10. <laughs> I, had, uh, I had to pull my uh, Catacon 2018 dice, um, <laughs> which I have two of. And then I got these two other dice from uh, Infinite Galaxies. Um, which I think it's a PBTA game. Um, they're pretty nice. That one's a five. Um, oh no! One thing you can do also that I that I that I like is that there's a distinguishing features thing next to each statistic, where if you've got like some incongruous number that's weird, like you can put like a little note for like explaining it, or like maybe it's like you know like great core strength or something like that. So like I. Mm. I I put like for like twelve like bikes like uh bikes to work. Oh, nice! Uh, you know, just because like oh hey, little things that can create your character. Yeah. So, what is power of the statistics? We've got strength, constitution, dexterity, intelligence, power, and charisma. The other five are pretty self-explanatory from my experience with our games, but power, uh. Uh, the only thing I can think of is like your ability with like using the occult or something. So basically what it is, is your willpower. Um, okay. Uh, it, it's the main thing that your sanity is going to be based off of. And also whenever, if you are getting access to like the unnatural rituals or anything like that, that's going to be with, that's going to be the thing you're testing off of. It's sort of like your willpower just because wisdom is eh, nobody really like you know it's sort of like a bit wisdom is the uh it is my is my bugbear for explaining to people okay <laughs> um like it, it so it sort of replaces that of like it's your willpower as like a, a general like how potent your spirit is or what right. have you Okay, so I see uh, calculating derived attributes. So we've yeah. got hit points. That that would be the next thing, right? Yep. So your hit points are going to be your strength plus your constitution divided by two rounded up. So the average of those. Um, 
Okay, I need I need help deciding. Okay. Okay. So my stats are 10, 18, 5, 15, 12, 16. Wow. Most of those are like generally around there. Where should I put the five? That's what I had to figure out for my six. Yeah. I was six? like, everything else is fantastic, but like this six? Uh, I, I ended up putting six in strength for myself. I was kind of thinking about doing that, but I won't if you already did. Um, um, oh, you could do decks? Yeah, it could just be clumsy as that's heck. That's like me. <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> me right. as a person. Okay, I will put it in dexterity. Two less C. That's what you got. Yep. Mm-hmm. I ended up putting a 15 in my decks. I ended up with a nine. Sorry, what did you say power was? I swear to God. It's like your listening. it's like your willpower, basically. It's what your what your sanity is gonna be based off of. And um, because we're never gonna use these characters, but it would be what they would do like an occult ritual off of. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Okay. So do I wanna be like not super sane and stable, or do I wanna be like really good at doing rituals? You, you wanna be really good at doing rituals. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I mean... I don't know. I kind of want to be unhinged. Yeah, I mean, like... I mean, fair, but but what's more cool is being unhinged or uh, necromancy. Being spooky. God, I have to choose. Why can't I be <laughs> spooky and crazy? You can just pretend to be unhinged. Ooh, good call. Yeah, and and the fact that you're not is even more creepy. Just put, just put a lower number in charisma just because you got bad vibes. There you go. Good call. I'll put my 10 in there. <laughs> so what does that leave me? I think a 12, 15. Okay. And I'm sorry. So now what next? I swear to God. All right. So <laughs> sorry. next we're doing derived attributes. Um, okay. On page 16 of the... 16 or 18, I don't really... Adobe, I hate you. Um, the There's like... A, there's four that you're going to look at. There's hit points, which is going to be the average of your strength and constitution. The strength plus con divided by two, round up. Um, Your willpower points, WP, is just going to be equal to your power. Um, Your sanity is going to be your power times five. And then your breaking point is your sanity minus your breaking point. So that's just really going to be power times four. Um, which represents basically like they're they're basically you basically have mental health checkpoints. <laughs> it's a bad <laughs> way to put it, but it's we're getting out the calculator because once again, I'd like to remind everyone that I have a degree in a social science, liberal arts. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a lot in this character sheet that I'm just not uh not not ha- not happy with the words of uh, number twelve motivations and mental disorders. Oh yeah, uh, I mean, number thirteen. You, yeah, I mean, you actually can like, uh, like, they part of the thing is like you can pick up like, it's one of those things where it's like, it, it's it's descended from that generation of games where you will where you know you can pick up disorders and they will be mechanical effects to them. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, cough, cough, palladium, cough, yeah. cough. They're nowhere as, like, they're no, I, the difference is being that they are treated nowhere as silly as, like, those games would, mm-hmm. um, which, I mean, to some people, I understand how that doesn't change your mind for it. That's perfectly fine. Mm-hmm. I, I think that, like, Delta Green at least attempt, like, it, it attempts to do those in a better way. Um, An attempt was made. Yeah. and. <laughs> I don't, I don't think perfect is the opposite of good, but also, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't, don't let perfect be the enemy of good. That's, right? that's, the, that's what I was looking for. Mm-hmm. And once, we've right. got our, once we've got our thing, then it's going to be time to pick a job. I'm very curious where everybody's stats ended up at. Um, so I ended up with a 10 in strength, a 12 in constitution, a 90 dexterity, a 14 in intelligence, a uh, 13 in power, and an 11 in charisma. Nice. The, I, the, thing I will, the thing I always say to folks who play this game is that your statistics don't actually matter a ton. It's only when you're doing stuff that's like completely untrained, like trying to lift a car off someone, trying to mm. like do quick math off the top of your head, or like 
just being generically charming to like work your way into past a front desk. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, for my stats, I went with a strength of six, a con of 14, a dex of 15, an intelligence of 12, a power of 15, and a charisma of 16. Got a bit of a mental powerhouse here. Yeah. All right. I've got strength at 12, con at 15, dex at five, <laughs> <laughs> intelligence at 16, power at 18, charisma at 10. Wow. Nice. Yeah. All right. So um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to pick a job for each of our characters. Um, okay. Starting on page 20 and then again on page 104, um, there are there are some generic professions. And then if you're like specifically like, I want to be for like this specific government agency or something, um, you can do that as well. So like some of the the generic professions are um, anthropologist or historian, computer scientist or engineer, uh, federal agent, physician, scientist, special operator. And there's some additional mm. professions like criminal, firefighter, a foreign service officer, the intelligence analyst, case officer, a lawyer or business executive, media specialist, a nurse or paramedic, pilot or sailor, police officer, program manager, soldier or marine. And there's even rules for, like, if you want to create your own, um, there's, like, but what's associated with each of these is you get a list of skills um, as well as, like, usually some options. But uh, depending on the profession you pick, that will give you a starting number of bonds to, uh, hmm. to create. Okay. Um, if you're like, if you're specifically like, what is like, I have like, I want to play something, somebody from this specific government agency, um, starting on page, I believe it's 104, I've got, yeah, 104, um, there will be, there's a list, there's like descriptions of federal agencies, as well as like some stuff for like, you, uh, using the, or profiles for that like specific uh, profession, if I remember correctly. Yep. Um, yeah. So, like, if you want to play, like, the uh, if you want to play, like, an FBI agent specifically, or um, uh, there's there's some fun ones. And there's another book that adds like park rangers, mm. um, because you know sometimes stuff happens in the national park, and it's um, the the interesting thing about Delta Green from like a, a setting standpoint is that. Nobody is that very few people actually work for Delta Green itself. They're recruited into like joint task forces that are just set up by case handlers of, of like, oh, hey, we've got um, these random things. And like, we're going to we're going to sort of guess at what we need and recruit people based on that. Mm -hmm. um, so it can create it, it uh, generally like get create situations where like generally everybody's going to have like some professional thing that they can contribute to it. Okay. Call to action. Yeah, like that. So Delta Green, we had uh, Justin on. Mm -hmm. Justin was uh, a delight uh, to record with. Uh, Definitely. And Definitely. Uh, I'm really glad w that we finally got to dive into the sanity mechanics uh, discussion. I know uh, we kind of pushed over that a little bit during our Call of Cthulhu series. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted to address it a bit then, but, you know, things were kind of rolling along pretty fast paced uh, during yeah. that recording, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Um, and this is a thing that Justin and I had talked about ahead of time too that it was something that they were willing to have a discussion about and wanted to talk about mm -hmm. too so this was a, a good time to do it and I think we had a really solid discussion about it and I, I appreciate the fact that we also got to talk about the nuances yeah. of it yeah because I think a lot of times especially online mm -hmm. um, especially especially on Twitter where you only have 208 characters yeah. um we don't get the chance to really dig into the sort of gray no. 
yeah, yeah. I, I i know there's more that we could talk about about you know sanity mechanics and problematic mechanics like that in games and mm-hmm. you know there's only so much time uh right. and uh you know maybe we'll we'll dive into that with an expert uh some other time for maybe another evolution cast episode or something um yeah but like yeah it's uh it's a thing that's kind of still propagating through the industry and you know people are like well you know it's tradition on this sort of thing and it's like well, it's how it's always been change it uh but uh you know i i'm glad that we had the discussion and uh it was uh it was a fun game uh even even with the the mechanics that we kind of uh had different thoughts on how it could be handled uh actually in game mm-hmm. a little bit better and i felt like this game offered a lot of different directions that you could go yeah. it wasn't just like uh we haven't covered it yet but something like knights black agents where it's just you're definitely hunting vampires um or you know, call of cthulhu exactly. where it's like a pretty set time yep. and setting you know this this one offered a lot more opportunity yeah. to um kind of individualize personalize your game mm-hmm. absolutely uh so i can't wait for everybody here uh the next couple of episodes of this series uh we we created some really cool stuff has some good discussion as well uh mm-hmm. so thanks for checking it out uh but before we let you go for the week we do have some calls to action uh, first up we do have one new review to read in a little bit but after that uh, we are all out again uh, we would love to hear what you think about the show we see reviews from all countries on apple podcasts so no worries about us not catching it uh, and you can also leave reviews on podcast addict if you are on android or Podchaser from pretty much any device with a browser which is nice uh, every review does help us out, and they always really make our day uh, nice, warm, sunshiny, uh, all that fun stuff. Uh, Which is necessary because Wisconsin has decided uh, be uh, that cold. we are on our way to winter already. Uh-huh. It's supposed to be like 38 here yeah. tonight. No, so. thank you. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we could use something warm. Exactly. A little podcast soup. Might as well. Next up, we have a reminder to check out the Outlaws of the Rebel Wastes Kickstarter that's actually starting tomorrow. If you haven't listened to the Spotlight episode from last Thursday, absolutely check that out and head on over to the Kickstarter page. And at the very least, give it a follow for notifications. That also, I think, helps some of the visibility on Kickstarter's main page, Mm -hmm. too. It's a really fun time. And uh, we think a lot of you would enjoy it. We had a great time oh, so much with it and came up with some really ridiculous stuff. So. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, one bit of show format news coming down the pipe. Uh, we'll soon be migrating the show to a new host. Uh, the One Shot Network's flagship shows are moving to the Megaphone hosting service to help cover costs on the network. Uh, and to allow all of us to take advantage of dynamic ad inserts to help promote things across the network Uh, and even for our own shows. So that'll be really cool uh, to have that capability Mm -hmm. Uh, because we are right around the border in terms of downloads per month uh, where we'll be actually be costing the network extra money to make this move. uh, You may start experiencing some dynamic ads Uh, across all of our episodes Uh, will likely uh, won't go beyond a minute of ads prior to the show or in the middle of the show somewhere Uh, but we'll likely play around with that uh, in the coming months to make it something that isn't super intrusive at all Um, also we'll make sure to keep the ads as family friendly as possible uh, as well as avoiding such things as like you know crypto ads uh, big oil ads uh you know, alcohol, other types of advertising uh, that just doesn't belong a, on a show that that could be heard by decent human beings and or kids. Yeah, we were given uh, the ability to sort of block whole categories. Yeah. So it's, you know, there's we're not going to like, um, you know, listen to each ad and kind of uh, you know, potentially accidentally miss something or right. anything like that. Um, we have banned these categories entirely, which is a really nice option yeah 
Uh, but if you do hear ads that you find undesirable, um, you know, let us know in the couple of months that uh, precedes the move or, or whenever you listen. And uh, we'll see what we can do to take care of that because, you know, it, it's dynamic for every user. So uh, person A could get a completely different ad than person B, uh, even if they're in the same town or in, in you know, the same sort of demographic. Um, so it all depends on the algorithm, uh, but you oh, know, the we mysterious want... algorithm. <laughs> exactly. But, you know, we want to make it, a, 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 a at least an okay experience for everybody, uh, going forward. Um, but the very good news, if, if this goes well, we could, uh, in addition to our Patreon, uh, recoup our costs much more easily, uh, and even set ourselves up to do some pretty cool things with the extra money. Uh, so bear with us in the next few months. Uh, it's all pretty new to us, uh, but we'll make sure the experience holds up to the quality that we want this show to reflect. I know it's always kind of like frustrating and disappointing when your favorite podcast kind of adds ads. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um and and I, I know that there's a definite feeling sometimes of like, oh, those people are selling out. Um, but A, this was a, a network mm -hmm. decision um, that we signed on to. But also it, it really will help us a lot. Yeah. Um, right now <laughs> we're, we're footing most of the bill for making this podcast. Yep. And um, we'd really love to be able to bring you more content and do some exciting things mm -hmm. that we're not able to do right now. Absolutely. So hopefully you'll bear with us and don't tell anyone I said this, but you can always just skip them. You can always just do the forward <laughs> yep. 30 seconds it's, thing it's and right. It still counts. Right. <laughs> uh, other ways to help us out. Uh, and we're in need of some listeners to help us out. If you're able to, is backing us on Patreon. Man, we're just like really asking people to do stuff here. I now. know, there's a lot going on. <laughs> there will also be early release episodes uh, with just the episode content whenever they're edited. So it won't have the cold open and call to action. Mm -hmm. um, will it have the ads? Uh, no. Oh, okay. Well, look at that. You get ad-free episodes yeah. if you back the Patreon. So if you're really kind of annoyed about this ad thing, have I got a deal for you? <laughs> <laughs> You'll also get bonus outtakes for every series at all of the levels, including the $1 level, uh, which are going to include stuff that's not in the the main episodes. Um, but a lot of it is going to be uh, chit chat from myself and Ryan mm -hmm. when we record our cold opens. Yeah. We sometimes spend a lot of time just chit chatting before we actually get going. Mm -hmm. So we're going to include some of those chats in there. So you can get to know us better. So you will get one of these bonus outtake episodes to correspond to every episode that we put out. So you're getting three of them a month right now. Yeah. Potentially in the future could be more. Yeah. Um, so that's really exciting. Uh, now is a great time to check it out at patreon.com slash character creation cast. If you have the ability to spare a little bit toward helping us afford to make this show for all of you. Uh, one of the perks, too, is that we will thank you personally right here in the call to action. And we'd love to add your name to this list because you are all amazing. Mm -hmm. Lieutenant, thank you so much. David, a.k.a. Tigranosaurus, uh, we are happy to have you here with us. Thank you. We are very glad to have you, Eric Bontz. Thank you for supporting us. Many thanks to Matt Newton. Shadim Cabal, thank you so much for your continued support. Daryl Holiday II, we appreciate your support. Thank you. The Shyest Barbarian, thank you so much for supporting us and for all of your good uh, participation in our Discord. Absolutely. Uh, and Benjamin Sweeney, uh, we appreciate your support as well. Thank you. Lurkin McGinnis, thank you for your support. And we're glad to have you here, Rob Fletcher. Thanks for supporting. And Kevin Brown, many thanks to you. Also, thank you for your participation in our Discord. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you to all of our future patrons. Uh, we wouldn't be able to make this show as easily without your assistance. And we truly appreciate your generosity. 
Finally, we have that review we promised you. Mm. This one comes from Something About Maps from the United States of America on iTunes. Also, apparently, from Wisconsin in the United States of America. Yeah, I'm very excited. So, hello, fellow Wisconsinites. Yes. Welcome to the cold weather with us. How about them Packers? <laughs> <laughs> Cheese. Okay, I think we covered mm. all the bases. Yeah. yeah. Culver's? Cold. No. <laughs> <laughs> it is titled Thoughtful and Entertaining. Prior to finding this show, I assumed I was a bit unusual in thinking that character creation was the best part of RPGs. In fact, I made characters for several years before playing my first game. It's nice to find others with the same passion. However, this is not merely a show about describing compelling and entertaining characters, though Amelia and Ryan are certainly skilled at coming up with those. Character creation serves as a lens through which they and their guests break down how a system ticks and how the fun has been intentionally made. It's been an unexpected education in game design theory, and it comes with a bonus that it's brought to me by fellow Wisconsinites. Mm. Yeah. In recent months, I've been rapidly binging my way through the archive, and while I'm starting to run out of material, I've hopefully timed this review <laughs> such that I can hear it on air by the time I catch up to the present. Smart. Yeah, you did it. <laughs> I guess I don't know how far. Well, at some point, you'll catch up yeah, and we're here. Exactly. Thank uh, you. Welcome <laughs> to the present. Uh, something about maps. Uh, thank you so much for the review. That was amazing. Absolutely. Oh. Well, uh, that's all that we have for today's episode. Uh, join us next week where we will be finishing up our characters for Delta Green. Until then, stay safe, everyone. Uh, drink some water. Relax your shoulders. Take some breaths. Uh, enjoy Spooky Month, everybody. Uh, Ooh, yeah. And keep making those amazing people. We'll see you next time. Thank you for joining us for part one of this character creation series. We'll be back in part two, picking up right where we left off. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Amelia Antrim, and I can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning or on my other podcast, Garbage of the Five Rings. Our other host, Ryan Bolter, can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast it originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by the absolutely fantastic Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game system used in today's guests can also be found in the show notes. If you'd like to support our show, find us on Patreon. Get access to bonus episodes, extra outtakes, and much, much more at patreon.com slash character creation cast. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We'll see you next time. Now we gotta read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you will find other great shows like Neo Scum. Neo Scum is a narrative comedy podcast featuring five Chicago improvisers antagonizing their way through the role-playing classic Shadowrun. It follows a group of misfits and outsiders. Z, the acerbic cyber troublemaker, Pox, the candy junkie klepto from across the pond, Tech Wizard, the public access actor with a petulant thirst for adventure, and Dak Rambo, the nastiest trucker this side of the Robo Mason Dixon. 
join the irascible Neosome crew on a puerile rock and road trip through a weirdo world of tomorrow, doling out street justice to every deed they encounter, whether they deserve it or not. 